Well, with almost 5,000 votes in unanimously, the Denver Broncos fans out there think we did pretty well in the draft. Uh, 88% of us thought that the Denver Broncos had an above average NFL draft with 35% of folks thinking that we nailed it. And that news gets even better today as the Denver Broncos sign an absolute barbarian to the offensive line. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I break down all things Denver sports, mostly focusing on the Denver Broncos. And if you could help me out by liking and subscribing to this channel, it truly helps me out a lot. I can't believe we just blazed past 7,000 subs. Uh, Never in my wildest dreams would I guess that. And I'm having an absolute blast. Feel like I started this channel at the perfect time as we are bouncing up off of the bottom, getting away from the Nathaniel Hackett era, and Sean Payton's blueprint and his fingerprints are all over this team, and uh, I think the playoffs are in sight. So let's get to the big news of the day, and that is the Denver Broncos gave one of the biggest guarantees to a um, to two guys. Our, I broke down the new running back that we got out of Memphis yesterday, and then today I want to talk about this absolute behemoth, this monster of a man, Frank Crum. Uh, six eight six nine, dude, massive and crazy, crazy fast. And essentially, we know as the draft starts winding down, guys who were supposed to be drafted end up um, just out there, and anyone in the league can make offers to them. And so, the sweeter the offer you make to them, the more likely they are to sign with you. And the Denver Broncos gave him one of the highest guaranteed uh, contracts to a undrafted rookie out there, uh, which really hints at the fact that we believe in him and think that he has a high upside. So big things about him is he ran a four nine uh, 40 yard dash, which is unreal when he, you consider he's six, eight, three thirteen. So he tied for second fastest 40 time uh, amongst offensive linemen at the combine. But the guys who also ran at that speed were much, much smaller. And so to have that kind of frame, he comes from a long history playing at the University of Wyoming. His dad was also a tackle at the University of Wyoming. His grandpa was also a tackle at the University of Wyoming. He has all of the physical tools. And everyone just says that his feet and his like his mental uh, have really made him drop down the board, which makes me crazy excited because you cannot – ever improve upon like those physical un- intangibles that he already has coming into this. But now you pair him with Zach Streif. And just as a reminder, if, if you're new to here, last year, Sean Payton brought in a new offensive line coach who was Zach Streif. Very similar build. He's a 6'9", uh, heavy guy, you know, about this same weight when he played. And he played right tackle, uh, making almost making Pro Bowls for Sean Payton for like nine years as a starter in New Orleans. And so many people on the Denver Broncos offensive line have just said the amazing insight that he has into Sean Payton's system and what he wants. And so who better to help Frank Crum get the mental, figure out the footwork, figure out how to fit into a Sean Payton system than Zach Streif. And that has me just crazy, crazy excited to think um, what he could be. So if you look at um, kind of what people are saying about him, he, he, like, again, his dad was a captain for the Cowboys, and then his grandpa played in the 1940s. And that at Wyoming, which has t- turned out some good NFL players, like they, they play a tough schedule. So he um, started 48 games at the University of Wyoming. Like Josh Allen was at the University of Wyoming. And so this isn't, you know, like he was playing at – in the Mac or something like that. He, he played at a big time school and started for a long time. And that is crazy, crazy exciting to have that knowing that we get a, get a pair him with Zach Streif. And so like, here's the article that was just talking about how our current offensive linemen are saying playing for Zach Streif is almost like having the answer key to Sean Payton's system. And so I, I think the development that we're going to see for Crum under Streif is going to be ridiculous. And we know that Garrett Bowles is in the last year of his contract with not a lot of guaranteed money left. He's getting older. So could uh, Crum be the, the solution? And it's hard to get, you know, getting a, a franchise left tackle as an undrafted person sounds absolutely ridiculous. But it also was ridiculous that the 49ers got Brock Purdy in the seventh round and getting a franchise quarterback in the seventh round or Tom Brady as a seventh round draft pick. So crazier things have happened. And when you have all the physical tools to then just have a coach who can get you there, I'm really, really excited about that. So looking, other thing I thought was just crazy interesting was just looking uh, at his actual combine results and comparing them with Garrett Bowles. And it's just nuts that like, 
They're very, very similar. So Garrett Bowles ran a 4.940, which was blazing fast. One of the reasons Elway picked him so high. And then you look here. Oh, what? We got a 4.940 just like Garrett Bowles. And then we look his 10-yard split, which is crazy important for a tackle. Very rarely are they running 40 yards. Most likely they are. You know, if the tackle is pulling and you're running outside, you really care about, like, how fast can they move that 10 yards for a pulling tackle. And you look that he's faster than Garrett Bowles. His vertical jump, his broad jump, both much more explosive than they were for Garrett Bowles. And then their um, 20 yard or their three cone drill, which is very important for a tackle, uh, just a little bit under what Garrett Bowles did that in. Yet I'm really, really high on that. And especially, man, you look at uh, the Chargers picking up Joe Alt at, at the fifth pick. Um, it felt like, you know, a reach if he isn't the dude. And you look that Crum, who we just got off of the undrafted pile, he is faster. Uh, in everything, he's more explosive. The three three cone drill was a little faster for Joe Alt, but the difference is Joe Alt is a tactician. He has the amazing feet. He has amazing hands, and my hope is just can Zach Streif and this and Sean Payton develop Crum into just at, at least a uh, a backup who can come in in the case that one of those guys gets hurt. Knock on wood. The Denver Broncos went from one of the most injured teams in the NFL two years ago when Nathaniel Hackett was running the show to we were the least injured team in all of football. Our starting offensive line, you'll remember, played all uh, the first 17 games of the season. And then that last game, McGlinchey missed. Yet, uh, if we were in the playoffs, he he said he was going to play in that. So very, very up on that. Very exciting. And it'll be cool to see what happens with Frank Crum. And that's the way the cookie crumbles or something cool like that. Um Other thing I just wanted to break down quick here is I still can't get over how pumped I am for Bo Nix, and we're hearing more and more different people kind of like rave about him and say that they think this wasn't a reach for the Broncos. Obviously, we know that he was mocked second round pick, and um, the people who are giving the Denver Broncos a B or a C draft grade, they're saying like, oh yeah, your picks from the third round on were straight fire. They're A plus picks, but because you reached at one, we're going to give you a B or a C in this grade, which I just think is bonkers crazy. Like if, if we got the quarterback of the future, who cares if we reached a little bit on him? We know that he wouldn't have made it to us at 15, and who cares if we pick up a couple fifth-round draft picks for that? I'm happy that we got our guy, um, and it's really cool to see C.J. Stroud, who helped those Texans go from the second worst team in the NFL to making a playoff run and he, listen into him talk about the adversity Bo Nix had at Auburn and, and just listen here for one sec. Have a rocky start and they end up figuring it out and they play better and better and better. I think now since he has so much experience, like experience is the best teacher. So here in C.J. Stroud, the guy who's done this, the guy who's succeeded coming out and being like, yeah, Bonex struggled, but experience is the best teacher, and he's had that. And listen as he continues here. Be able to go in there, compete for a job. Uh, Sean Payton is a great quarterbacks coach. Again, we've heard tons of Sean Payton hate, and that people think I'm just like drinking orange and blue Kool Aid here. It's a lie. All I drink is Lacroix, uh, but I'm not like irrationally high on Sean Payton for no reason. You're hearing multiple people, RG3. Des Bryant, C.J. Stroud, people who have no reason to try to give him his flowers, say he's a great quarterback coach. To me, what stands out to him, just just, um, him as a quarterback, is his feet. He has great feet. So I I think, you know, the the difference between him and some of these other quarterbacks, I have a bunch of Michigan friends who just talk about, um, you know, because Michigan ran the ball so much, Jay Jay McCarthy doesn't have great feet in the pocket because he never had to and you look at Bo Nix's feet in the pocket Sean Payton even talked about it like he throws from a muddy pocket and I'm just really really high on him and it's cool to see that it's not just orange and blue Kool-Aid that people who don't need to tout Sean Payton and tout this this pick are coming out and saying you got the dude uh, which is why I'm here for it because we know that Bo knows football Bo knows Broncos bro Bo knows getting us back to the playoffs, and we are going to make sure that none of us jumped off the bandwagon. It's going to feel so cool. Uh, so thanks for watching Broncos Country, and let's giddy up. That one hung on the rim, just hung on it.